like to welcome everyone out this morning. Welcome Bethlehem, uh, all that are here in their uh, in their vehicles. It's so awesome to see you. I'd like to welcome everyone else that is at home, that is is watching or tuned in. Uh, those uh, members of Bethlehem and those that are members of other churches, or just those that are tuning in to hear God's word this morning, it is a. Uh, it is so awesome to be in the presence of God. I would say in God's house, but in the presence of God. That's exactly a, of of where we are uh, right now. Um, you know, this uh, this wonderful day. I uh, I just I just praise God for His presence. That we don't have to be inside of some building. We don't have to be enclosed. We are in His presence right where we are. And I. Uh, I want to also start by wishing a very happy Mother's Day to, to all the mothers. Uh, as I know, today we celebrate and we honor those mothers, and we uh, tell them how much we love them, how much we appreciate them. We remember uh, uh, memories of our mothers for those that have, have gone on before us. But let us not just hold it to today. Let it be uh, that we honor and we love and we appreciate our, our mothers every day. Uh, as they play such a key role in uh, in our lives that uh, that that we just should just praise God for. Um, so I want to to let you know uh, in way of announcement that we will not be having uh, just our our service tonight. Our talk on dinosaurs that I know is is coming. Uh, Kyle will be putting out a a brief message. Tonight he may do that live, but he may just do that by posting it. Uh, so there will be something that will come out at six o'clock uh, tonight. Uh, so so encourage you to watch that at your uh, at your convenience of of when you get a chance to tune in and look at look at that. But um, I want to start and just just open with a word of prayer, and then we're going to uh, to get going. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, I come to you and I. Uh, Man, I just I just praise you for your presence as we as we see you in the sunshine, as I feel you in the wind, dear Lord. As I just feel you being uh, being gathered here with other believers, dear Lord, and just your presence that I know uh, you are with those at home as well, and just connecting us this way, dear Lord. It's not what we would choose, but it's what you have chosen for us at this point in time. And dear Lord, let us trust you more. Let us rest in 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 your. Uh, your sovereignty, your absolute control, dear Lord, and I just pray that you would draw us to a place that we we want to connect and know you more, dear Lord. I pray a special blessing over all mothers this morning, dear Lord, and I just pray for those families that are celebrating their first Mother's Day without their mother physically being there with them, dear Lord, and I just pray that that you allow today to be a day of reflection for them, dear Lord, with, with smiles and with laughter as they remember uh, memories of their mothers, dear Lord. And I just pray, I pray a special blessing over those as they, uh, as they continue uh, to be the mother that you've created them to be today and the days ahead, dear Lord. Let, let, uh, let the mother seek to, to be the mother that you've created them to be and let us as husbands and children, dear Lord, honor, honor, uh, those mothers, dear Lord, loving them and appreciating them every day, not just today. Dear Lord, I uh, I pray a special blessing over this service, dear Lord, over all that will speak. Pray a calmness upon them, dear Lord, a peace upon them that only you can give and allow them to speak boldly, confidently, courageously your truth, your words of how you have touched their lives. And dear Lord, how your word, dear Lord, goes before us, dear Lord, changing hearts. It's only you that can change Lord God, and I, uh, I praise you for that, dear Lord. I, I just lift all these things up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, yeah. All right. Welcome this morning, right? Good to see uh, those that have came out as well as those that have joined us on uh, Facebook this morning. It's good to have you worshiping here with us. Uh, we do have a jam-packed service uh, this morning with lots going on, so you'll have an opportunity uh, to, to worship right alongside of us as uh, we're going to have just a couple different 
uh, ladies speak this morning. I, I feel like that you'll you'll be truly blessed uh, by the word that uh, the Lord has has given them this morning. Uh, they're going to be answering just uh, a, a couple of things uh, based completely upon motherhood and the gospel. And I, I wish I could tell you a little bit more on uh, kind of the background behind that, but we'll we'll talk more about that later on. But. I am glad that you're here this morning, those who are physically here as well as those that are watching. Uh, lots of things to continue to play out. I know that lots of restrictions have already been lifted. I know that there are lots of churches already this morning that are gathering together. Uh, we're still making our plans uh, towards those original dates, uh, that Wednesday night being the 20th and then that first Sunday being the 24th. Uh, we're going to be finalizing those plans uh, this week coming up. So definitely stay, uh, stay in tune, right, as we continue to share those plans. Uh, continue to pray as uh, we know there's lots of work that has to happen in order for every bit of this to take place. Uh, so pray, right, pray for us decision-making wise as well as for the work that has to be done. Uh, but we're, we're, we're getting more and more excited about gathering together under this roof again, right, uh, knowing right we're doing that spiritually right now, but it's going to be great as we uh, as we do get to do that uh, in, in just a little bit of time. Uh, I know that there are tons of prayer requests, a couple of those that I want to make sure that we, we mention, right? Continue to pray for the uh, Sheila Hurrigan's family as she lost her dad this, uh, this week. Uh, I know that uh, she'll greatly appreciate you continue prayers, especially as... Uh, they make uh, arrangements and all those things, as well as for the Hearst family, uh, that being Norma Goode's uh, son-in-law uh, that, that passed away yesterday. Uh, totally a shock, right? So uh, I know that they'll greatly appreciate you praying for them as well as they make those arrangements coming up uh, very, very soon. So I know there's countless others. I cannot encourage you enough. Make sure uh, you share those, whether you share it with your deacon, right, or you share it with your Sunday school teacher, but make sure that we know uh, we want to continue to be in prayer. We want to be able to do everything that we can, especially as we're doing this uh, social distancing still, right, and we're not being able to be around one another. I know that Mother's Day is going to be different for lots of people. I'm sure that there's going to still be lots to gather together. I hope that you take full advantage of this time, right, that the Lord has given each and every one of us. Uh, I know that it's going to be a little bit different. I know that we wouldn't normally be doing a Sunday evening service on Mother's Day. Uh, we just really felt like that, guess what, you're going to be at home anyway, so we're, we're going to put something out uh, tonight, so just, just be on the lookout for that as well. But I really wanted to, to share just one thing before we, before we let uh, these ladies speak this morning, right? Uh, one thing that always amazes me when it comes to Mother's Day, there's so many good stats that they always put out that that I know that I, I typically don't read, uh, but one is on moms, right? And every year uh, they put out this uh, research on what being a mom entails and that if a stay-at-home mom or a mom, uh, if it were to be paid via salary of how much that a mom would make for that to be her profession, right? This year it's, it's went up remarkably, right? Almost a 10% increase on, on the wages for a stay-at-home mom. But uh, according to this year's survey, right, it's up to about $180,000 a year is what the salary would take uh, for a mom. And I know, right, my kids, uh, sometimes they're very, very lax in their thinking on how much that mom does at our house. But I love that they've even categorized of what those positions are, right? So just, just bear with me here. Academic advisor, they are an accountant, an art director, an athletic director, a buyer, a CEO, a coach, a daycare teacher, dietitian, an instructor, event planner, executive housekeeper, facilities director, groundskeeper, interior design, janitor, judge, magistrate, laundry manager, logistics analysis, a maintenance supervisor, network administrator, photographer, plumber, public school teacher, psychologist, recreational therapist, staff nurse, social media specialist, a tailor, and then a work slash life manager, right? And I know, I know there's tons of other things that each one of those entail, but 
Uh, today is a day that we are going to celebrate mothers, right? And not, not just mothers. I, I don't want those ladies who, who have not experienced motherhood uh, for them to feel left out, right? We're, we're celebrating all, all women today, uh, knowing that there are many that long uh, to, to have children that can't. Many that have not fit into that category yet. Uh, many that maybe will never fit into that category, right? Uh, we know that there are lots who have already lost children that are no longer mothers in those ways. We can go on and on and on, right? I don't want to leave any of those out. Uh, we do have gifts here today, right, for those uh, that have come out. Make sure as you leave out to drop off your, your tithe and offering as well as pick out your flyer. And then for those who are watching, right, or those who are... Those who are at home, I want to make sure that if you still want one of those flyers, we want to make sure that you have them. Get your husband up off the couch, right, or a loved one, and make sure that they come out and pick one up for you. If they don't, right want us to deliver those flyers, we'll be more than glad to do that as well. So please, right, uh, make sure that you take advantage of that gift that we want to give you as well. So I, I want to pray before Amanda comes and shares this morning, and then we'll, we'll get started here. Lord, we do just come to you, and we're just uh, thanking you for this opportunity, thanking you for how wonderful that you are. And we do just pray right now, ultimately for the remainder of our service, uh, we're just praying for... Uh, for, for more and more people uh, to experience you in the way uh, that we we know that they can in the way that we want them to, but more than that, the way that you want them to. And we pray uh, for, for just every area, every aspect, uh, knowing that uh, even in the midst of this beautiful day, even in the midst of of the wind blowing and, and the sun shining, Lord, that uh, let us not forget that there are, there are many whose heart is hurting today. And we pray that today will be a day that uh, they feel your love, your presence, as well as this will be an opportunity for more and more people to come to know you. So I just pray right now, just continue to hide us behind the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Um, Kyle had asked if I would say a few words about uh, the gospel and motherhood, as, as he just announced. So the first question he posed to us was, how has the gospel prepared you for motherhood? When I first received this question, I had to ponder on it a little while and ask myself and thought to myself that I really was not sure I'd ever thought of this, really. I know so often for me, when I think of the gospel initially, I think of things on, I guess, a bigger scheme, like taking the gospel to the ends of the earth, the Great Commission, and so on but not so sure I'd ever really thought of it in the terms of preparing me for motherhood. The more I did think about it, though, I came sadly to the realization that initially the gospel really didn't have much to do with preparing me for motherhood, at least not as much as it should have. I was prepared, or so I thought, about 13 some years ago for entering into the world of being a mother. We even waited a few years after marriage to get ready and prepare ourselves to have children and to make sure we were ready. I've read plenty of articles, books on being a mother, listened to great advice from others, even had excellent godly Christian role models, including my mom. But for me, my preparation wasn't driven by the gospel and the love of Jesus Christ at that time. When it came to enter, when it came time to enter this role of being a mom, I was a good mom. I guess they're really what, I'm sorry. My children were well taken care of, they were clothed, well fed, they weren't abused, weren't neglected, they were loved. On the surface and to others, there was nothing majorly wrong with the picture, and I guess there really wasn't. But I have, sorry, I keep losing my place, but I have since realized in my years of being a mom that there is a difference in being a good, even great mom than being a godly mom. And I'm sorry for the years I missed out on this, and especially that my children missed out on this as well. The good mom didn't always make decisions based on her children's best interests. Sacrifices looked different. They were loved and well taken care of, but not with a Christ-centered, gospel-focused and lo love that they could have been. Praise the Lord that God met me where I was at and has continued to deepen and grow my relationship and love for Him through the years. As 
because I have learned more and know more of Christ's love for me, this is when I think God really started fully preparing me for motherhood as he wanted it to be, not just how I thought it should be. As I continue to understand just what the gospel story really is, just how deep and how high and the magnitude of Christ's love for me, can I better understand the love a mother gives and how to give and show the same type of love to my children? Putting in this love of Christ makes only the same type of love come out. As I realize more and more how great a sacrifice God made by giving us his son, even knowing all my sins, have I realized what self-sacrifice really means and what it looks like for my children and family. It makes sacrifice not just a thing to do in order to get something in return. Grace and forgiveness. As I continue to realize the full amount, although I don't think I ever fully will, this forgiveness and mercy Christ has shown me how much easier it makes giving grace and forgiveness to my children when my children need it or maybe even when they don't deserve it. I know I don't deserve Christ's forgiveness and grace either. As I learn how God delights in his children, I have learned to delight more in my children in, the, in this job as a mother, different than I ever had before. I've learned to find joy in my children and, it, and in this job in my children in this job as a mother different than I ever had before. I've learned that it's joy in my children and not just a job as a mother. I realize my need for Christ not only in salvation but in everything I do. I've learned that, that this I've learned that this role of a mom was not meant to be a one man or one woman show. On my own I will mess up things terribly and I still do make plenty of mistakes. I'm sure, but I'm learning that, it wasn't meant, that I wasn't meant to do this alone. I need Christ's direction and help in every way to fulfill this role he has blessed me with. Just as Christ even went to his father in time of his need, so must I in this thing called motherhood. He has also sent me godly, a godly companion to navigate these waters with. So in a nutshell, no amount of preparing parenting books, human advice, or earthly role models could fulfill could ever pre fully prepare me for motherhood. Only the gospel and Christ's example of love, mercy, sacrifice, and forgiveness. Grace and compassion could prepare me for motherhood. And it is still preparing me and growing me as a mother. I don't think one day I'll ever say, okay, I'm prepared for this now. Another thing I remember and want to share that really changed and challenged my way of thinking about motherhood and my role was a time when we were just beginning to think about and pray over adoption. I shamefully remember asking myself if I could love, really love a child I adopted just like a child I had carried and delivered. I wanted to make sure I was pre prepared in every way and this was one way I needed to be sure of. God placed a devotional in my hands around that time in which the author of the particular devotion had dealt with the same questions. I remember it stating that God spoke to them saying that their biological children were not really theirs either, no more than their adopted child would be. But really they were all God's children and he just happened to bless them with and had given them the privilege of teaching them, watching over them, and raising them up in Christ. What a task and a role we've been given. He has entrusted us with his children to love them and teach them about Christ. That made me think of my role as a mother in, in general and what my job truly was as a mother, no matter if it was adopted or with biological children. I'm not sure what the, who that was meant for, but it does lead me to the next question. How has motherhood prepared you to share the gospel? Another question I can honestly say I didn't really think much about before this week, or at least not in this way. I'm not sure how Kyle really wanted that to go, but this question to go, but I first thought about how it prepared me to share the gospel with my children. As I thought about it more, this event I just shared in my life came to mind. Truly realizing the job of motherhood and the important tasks God has commissioned me through it makes sharing the gospel to my children essential. I know we've heard lots about being essential in the last few weeks, but there here is something that really is. Motherhood is not just hugs, kisses, fixing boo-boos, and preparing them to be successful in life. It's a much bigger job. It's, it also must include telling our kids about Jesus and his love. Not just telling them, but showing them the gospel lived out in our lives as well. God blessed me with his children to watch over. Wow, I really, I really continue to pray I don't mess this one up. 
I also think as mothers, we want the best for our children and want them to have even better lives than what we have. We want to give them good gifts and prepare, and prepare for them to have a great life and not a great life measure, measured by man. Another reason I think motherhood has prepared me to share the good news of the gospel to my children. What better gift can we give our kids as a mom? Not only the gift of eternal life, but a more joyous and content life here on earth because they will have that with Christ in it. I know personally what it has done in my life, and I want even better for them. I also want my children to be a light in such a dark world, and having the gospel in, in, in their life can do this. I also believe sharing the gospel can be done in other ways than using our words. It can be shown through our actions and our choices. As a mother, I make choices I believe are best for our children as followers of Christ, which means sometimes our children may look different, they may not have what others do, and they may not get to do some of the things that other children do. By striving to be the godly mother and raise my children by God's standards and not man's, I believe I share the gospel in this way as well to others. Or at least I pray others see the gospel through my actions as a mother. I pray they see the love of Jesus Christ portrayed in me as a mother to my kids, in my family, and through my marriage. I've heard it once said that you may, you may be the only Bible someone reads. And I think motherhood is this. That a great, what a great pl platform Christ has given me to share and show the gospel through. I again, pray I continue to grow in this role and continue to share God's love to others. Thank you for this opportunity to share, and happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Thank you. Mother's Day to everyone, and I want to especially say Happy Mother's Day to my mom, uh, Mary, and uh, Russell. She truly is an example of the Proverbs 31 woman. Uh, she has always led by Christ's example in my life, and um, the love that she has for God spills out to everyone that she comes into contact with, and she continues to pour her knowledge in Christ into me as I try to raise my children. So, Mom, I love you, and thank you. Um, when Kyle sent this to me, or he called me first and asked if I would be interested in doing this, of course my answer was no, because I don't like public speaking. Um, but of course, I told him I would do um, what the Lord wants me to do. And God laid on my heart um, this scripture that comes out of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and it's about Paul and Apollos. And I really couldn't understand why, because during that time there was some strife in the church where people were uh, relying on teachers instead of Christ. And I just, I could not understand, like, God, why are you wanting me to talk about this? And um, he just showed me that, you know, Paul came to the church and he planted the seed. And um, then Apollos, he came to water that seed. And God, the main person, the main, you know, point is he's the one that grows that seed within us. And so God showed me that as I was growing up, I was blessed to be in a Bible-believing home, that he showed me that, you know, my parents planted that seed within me. And Beach Grove, the church I grew up in, was the church that watered that seed. Their actions, their uh, teachings, their love, uh, you know, just helped grow that um, desire for Christ in me. And because of all that, because of what I was learning, God was just working on the inside of me. And because of that, I came to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And so I know how important the gospel is because it was implanted in me by my family and by my friends and by God himself because he put those people in my life. My life. And so just like my children, Paul and I, no, I'm okay. Kyle and I are the ones that are planting the seed for them. And um, you guys, the church, from Christmas.
Miss Norma to Bobby Joe and Amanda and Jessica and all the other teachers. You guys are teaching my children things that I can't teach them. And you're being that example for them. And I thank you for that. So you're watering. You're being like the Apollo. And, um, and God is working in them. And I know this because three of my children have accepted Christ as their Savior. And I only have two more. So now to the question. How has the gospel prepared me for motherhood? When Kyle and I had Kyla, we only wanted the best for her and for all of our children. When we think of becoming a mother, we dream about all the things we want for them, from them being healthy, happy, smart, um, having a wonderful spouse one day, and to be successful. But there is no way that Kyle and I could ever provide all that for them, but Christ can. He is the ultimate healer. He can provide an everlasting joy and fill them with the knowledge they need, and he has a spouse already in mind for them because that's what Kyle and I are praying. And I know that they will be successful in whatever they do if they will trust in him and be obedient to his will. I tell people this after they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that this is the most important decision you will ever make in your life. I know that if God is the Lord of my children's lives, then no matter what Satan throws at them, they will be okay. Because Christ has defeated Satan and death. Being a mom is not easy, especially raising five children. The struggle is real. But when I sit back and I think of my favorite verse, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, I know everything is going to be okay. And it's trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. When things get hard, all I have to do is trust and pray, and I will know all is well. Hold on. Why blow away? Here we go. All right, the second question. How has motherhood prepared me to share the gospel? I never knew how much love I could have for someone until all of my children. When Kyla entered the world, everything changed. If I could, I would stand in front of them when someone is bullying them. I would take the pain from their heartaches, their, their heartbreaks. And if I could take their illnesses, I would. I would die for my children because I love them so much. Just as I love my children, Christ loves each one of us no matter what we've done and he did die for us to cover our sins so there is an urgency within me to share the gospel there are too many people dying without knowing and feeling his love God has called us to go and make disciples and why wouldn't I after what he has done for me why wouldn't I want to extend that love this is why it's so important to do our part because uh, we God has blessed us with many gifts and talents. You may be a Paul to someone that doesn't hear about it at home. You may be the one that plant that seed. And someone else may come alone in water like what Paulus did. But just know that God gets the glory and he is the one who's going to conquer. So that's what I have. But I also want to share that after accepting, a Jesus, after accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, goodness, don't let Satan try to take that from you because in the word in Romans 8 31 through 39 it tells us there's nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ and it says what then are we to say about these things if God is for us who is against us he did not even spare his own son but offered him up for us all how Will he not also with him grant us everything? Who can bring accusation against God's elect? God is the one who justifies, who is the one who condemns. Christ Jesus is the one who died, but even more, he has been raised. He, is also, he also is at the right hand of God and intercedes for us. Who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or anguish, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. As it is written, because of you, we are being put to death all day long. 
We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No. In all these things, we are more than victorious through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that not even death or life or angels or rulers, things present or things to come, hostile powers, height or death or any other created thing will have the power to separate us from the love of God. That is in Christ Jesus our Lord. All right, I want to end with a prayer. Dear God, I just thank you so much for another day. I just thank you for um, my mom and my family and the way that I was raised, Father, that them instilling your love, your truth into me and my brother and my sister. And dear Lord, I just thank you for the responsibility of my children that you have given me, dear Lord. And I just pray that I can do uh, you justice, Father, and, and I can raise them up the way that you see fit. And I just ask you to bless each and every mom out there today, dear Lord. Um, just touch her and just uh, be with her throughout this day. And just let um, her, let them feel your loving arms around, around them, dear Lord. I just love you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. I'll be owing both of those women uh, a trip to the beauty shop, I'm sure, after blowing their hair all over the place. You know that they love I'm going to take it now. You know that they love the Lord uh, in standing up here in all this wind and sharing with uh, uh, and about his goodness. But I just want to I want to piggyback, right, just right off of everything that they said when it comes to, to motherhood and the gospel and and even throughout this week, you know, I, I, I've looked at, at, at my life and I think about how blessed that I am for, for the ladies, the women that God has put into my life, right? And, uh, not, not to mention uh, uh, Kimberly and, and being uh, the mother that she is to all of our children, not to my, uh, my own mother uh, that God placed into my life that put up with more stuff and still does being uh, married to uh, the Yankees right um, definitely definitely God has given her uh, lots of patience to put up with us in many different ways and then I think about as well I think about uh, ladies as my grandmothers both of them and in, in the way in the that they played out in in my life I think about many different ladies that I went to church with growing up from Dora Shoemaker to, to countless other ladies that were instrumental in just leading me uh, in ways that I'm sure that they don't even realize and praying for me in, in times when I definitely need it. But then I think about uh, ladies as sweet as my as my uh, my aunts and my great aunts. You know, I think about Ethel May Carico, uh, my granddaddy's sister, and I think about that how much of my early childhood that I spent at her house and she spent at our house, and just countless ways that she invested in my life. And and I could go on and on, and I know that I'll leave somebody out, so I, I'll stop. But I I think about. Uh, this morning and, and just so much of, of the gospel, right? And I know that I can't speak from uh, a mother's point of view today, but I can speak from a, a father's point of view. Good. Come on. Come on. think about motherhood there's there's something special about it right every day it should be it should be showing each and every one of us the need for the gospel not only in our individual lives but in so many other people's lives right the need that the gospel and what God has entrusted with each and every one of us right every time uh, that we we have sin in our life right and it's manifested even in our children's life as we see this play out how much more do we see that being reflected uh, of what's taking place in our lives every time that we see our children act the way that we once act or the way that we still act right just think about it just for a moment 
just think about how how long suffering God has been throughout everything, right? How he is so patient and how that he deals with us, uh, even in our foolish ways, the way that he constantly is is extending uh, uh, patience and love and grace. And I wonder the same thing. Are we are we extending that same sort of patience with our own children? Just think about it for a moment, the lengths that Christ went to, what it caused him to be obedient to his Father. And I just, I, I simply want to ask you to talk to me today. To what extent are you willing to go to in order to please God? Before you get too overwhelmed this morning, right? I, I want you to know that your hope and your strength, all those are found in Christ alone, right? You don't have to do this thing called motherhood, right? You don't have to do life on your own. Help is here, right? And it's ready to go at any moment. Jesus is ready to become active, right? The gospel is at work. And it's active and at work all around you. The Holy Spirit is living on the inside of you. Think about it just for a, just for a moment, right? The gospel is is there is there anything else you need daily as much as the gospel? And I know I know even as I say that we could be thinking about food or we could be thinking about water. But just think with me just for a moment. Think about Jesus' work on the cross. Right, it, it allows me to bring every bit of my sins, my failures, my worries, my problems, all of my anxiety, my needs, my wants, right? It allows me to bring every bit of that directly to Him. And guess what? I can find all of the help, every bit of the help that I need right there in Him. I love Hebrews 4.16, right? Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help Him in a time of need. And I, I want you to hear me out, mothers, right? I want you to hear me out, ladies. Through the gospel, you should be seeing that, yes, you have sin in your life. And guess what? That, that's not just for mothers. That's not just for ladies. That's all of us. More than we want to admit, we should see through the gospel that we do not meet the standard of what God wants. But guess what? God loves you, and He loves you so much that He loves you the same exact way that He loved His Son. And you should be, you should be hanging on that very fact, that very moment right now, right? That because Jesus lived a perfect life, that God looks at you and He sees Christ's righteousness. When, when he looks at you, he doesn't see you in the air of your way. He doesn't see your sin. He sees Christ's righteousness. And I, I know that's a statement this morning that I want you to get a hold of. He sees Christ's perfect love. He sees the, the patience that Christ has. He sees the grace that He gives and He sees the, the forgiveness that He extends, right? He doesn't see our sinful actions. He, he doesn't see our sinful reactions. He doesn't see the grudges that we hold. He doesn't see my selfish desires that I want above what He wants. No, He sees His perfect and finished work of His Son Christ. And I want you to know this morning that mistakes are going to happen. This, is, this should be most comforting to us, right? Because this is where the gospel plays out the best. This is where, where the gospel is able to sign, you see. You, you get to see the love of Christ that He has for you in, in each and every one of these moments. You get to experience the love that He has, the grace that He shows. When you fail as a mother, when, when you fail in this moment, right? You get to experience these things firsthand that Christ paid for. Those very things that He nailed upon the cross, those very lashes that He took, you get to experience Christ paid for each and every one of those moments. I want you to, to lean on that truth today. Rest in knowing that. That, that, that you're going to make mistakes. You're not going to be perfect. There's only one that's perfect. Your children are going to make mistakes. 
They're going to do things that that you're not going to be proud of, that they're not going to be proud of. But guess what? Praise be to God today that you have a loving Father, that I have a loving Father, that we have a loving Father who wants to forgive us of all of that. Right? John 15, 5, it's a verse that I know that me and Bobby Joe wear out that we, we both make mention of all the time. It says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he is it, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. I want you to know this morning, mothers, ladies, you can do nothing apart from the gospel. That means motherhood. So how do we apply this to our lives? How do, how do we take away what these, what these mothers have already shared with you in, in the gospel and motherhood, not only of, of how that the gospel has changed them to be mothers, but how motherhood has changed them and prepared them with the gospel? I'm glad you asked, right? I know I ain't supposed to lick my finger with COVID-19, but I just did with this wind. Hold steady here. Come on up. I got just a couple things, right? We need to depend upon the Word. First and foremost, we need to depend upon God's Word. Ladies, that's that's the most important thing, right? If you take away anything today, depend upon God's Word. Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by the testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Depend upon God's Word, not upon my Word, not upon Amanda's or, or Kimberly's or Bobby Joe's or, or the deacons or the Sunday school teachers, right, or, or someone else. Depend upon God's Word. This renewed mind that you will receive, right, it, it leads you to a deeper understanding of Christ. And you only gain that by experiencing Him through this Word. And guess what it does? It overflows into your actions. It will be evident in everything that you say and you do and what you teach your children, right? What we welcome into our homes, right? Love the Word. Sing the Word, right? Pray it aloud. Do not get tired of it, right? Just make it part of your everyday life, whether you're folding laundry or you're shopping for groceries or whether you're cooking a meal or you're taping or putting a Band-Aid on a wound, right? Or you're taking care of stuffed animals, right? Keep the word of Christ near and dear to your heart. Number two, right? Bear his fruit. We just looked at that a little bit in, in John 15, right? But but Jesus even says these words in Matthew 17, right? He says, you will recognize them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? So every healthy tree bears good fruit, but the diseased tree bears bad fruit. Come on, just, just get a hold of this. We're all bearing some type of fruit, whether it's good or whether it's bad. But I want you to imagine just for a moment, imagine yourself as a tree, a tree that is sprouting fruit for your children, and they are eating on it on a regular basis. And whether it's good or it's bad, they're still partaking of that fruit. Just as food just physically impacts our body as it, as it nourishes us, as it does for us things, right? The spiritual fruit that, that we should be bearing is in the Word, in, in our attitudes, in, in our action, right? And all of those things affect those that we're around. Listen to me. Not only depend upon the Word of God, but make sure you're bearing godly fruit and with those two things, then, then we get to do what, what we've really been designed to do, right? Is, is to serve our families. And I know, I know this is probably gonna, gonna steer this women's movement right off the, right off the map here, right? And maybe hurt some feelings, but guess what? We'll get over it. Mark 10, 45 says, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. I want you to know, ladies, right? That, that you've been called and you've been called to serve your family. 
A mother's life is full of all kinds of things. And there's all kinds of responsibilities from, from service work that you're called to do. And whether it's cooking or cleaning or washing or mending or shopping or managing or caring or playing or organizing. Uh, and I could go on and on and on and on. But when a mother truly surrenders her hearts to Jesus, right? All of these sacrificial services, they're handed over to Jesus. And, and He perfectly models every one of those things. And then when you please Him and when you honor Him by, by serving Him, then it makes these things so much more well worth it. You, you truly begin to serve Him in the capacity that, that you were meant to be. And then you truly look at folding clothes different than as a responsibility. You do it because God has prepared you and, and set that upon in such a way. And, I, and I'm not minimizing ladies in any way and saying that they're the only ones that have to do laundry. No, I, I'm not saying that we go on back to the olden days. I'm saying that whatever role and responsibility that God has placed in your life, you do it all for His glory. And whether it looks like it's the most uh, rewarding feat or rewarding time, I, I rest assured that if you do it for the glory of God, He will get the glory for it. Our call as what Christ has placed in our lives is, is that we must see when it comes to being parents, especially mothers, that, that we need to trust Christ above all else. And we need not only to place our life in His hand, but we need to place our children's life in His hands. We must model obedience. We must teach our children to obey for the greater purpose of obeying God. And the way that we serve one another, if, if we're doing that humbly and obediently, our, our children should see that. And they should see that we not only do that to those that we care about, but we do that to, to all, all of mankind, right? Which leads me to the last, right? Is that uh, as we follow through every bit of this, we should be willing to equip the next generation. Come on, flip back over, girl. Titus 2, it's one of my, one of my favorite passages that, that's written right here in the New Testament. Uh, it, verses 1 through 5 says, But as for you, teach what accords with sound doctrine. Older men are to be sober-minded, dignified, self-controlled, sound in faith, in love, and in steadfastness. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanders or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good, and so train the younger women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind, and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. And I know, I know once again, right, in, in what we're living in this time of this, this modern-day women's movement, and, and, and I'm not talking about inequality in any of those things, right? But I, I want you to know that for so many times we're pushing our, our, our ladies to do something that they were never, never designed or created to do. We're putting them in positions that are really setting our households up for failure. And I know that there are high demands upon women, especially young mothers today. And the way that, that Jesus is calling us and leads us to serve uh, may not be the way that they once did before they had children. And that, and that may just be for a season. If right now you're in a place where you can't serve Christ in, in the way that you want to, and maybe it's diminishing, maybe maybe right now the season that He has you in, that, that, that you need just to stop for a moment and say, okay, God, I, I understand what I once was doing for you right now. Uh, my family may need to be here for just a season. That doesn't mean that you're putting uh, God on the back burner. You need to surrender this season to God. 
You need to love your church. You need to, to love God's people. You need to do that by praying, by giving, by encouraging, by committing to corporate worship, to, to small gatherings, all of these things. But then also seek an opportunity for you to, 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 to be encouraged by older women, right? And I don't care if it's by a few years or if it's by a few decades, right? And I, it doesn't have to mean by age. It can be meaning by, by spiritual age let these older ladies speak life into you right let them love you let them love your family and if you fit into this category of being an older lady then hey don't stop don't stop this process for our younger ladies continue to help them we're we're all called to christ we're all called to serve him we're all called to follow him right by by the power of his spirit by His teachings, by His words, right? By bearing His fruit, sharing the gospel with, with people in and on our own paths. Even if that, that means that our path doesn't rarely stray from home or just to the grocery store or maybe to the park or, or just the time that we have here together. God is using you. He's using us to raise up future generations, to raise up future church members, to raise up, to take over where we're going to leave out from this place. We are called to make disciples at home who will then one day make disciples, who, who then turn in to make other disciples. And this goes on and on and on. But this process takes time, church. And we need to invest in our children because we, we want to see God's kingdom come. We want to see God's will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. We want to see what God wants to see. And I know, I know right now in the midst of everything that I've already said, right? I want you to know, I know that there are a lot of moms, I know that there are a lot of women right now in the midst of this that are, that are truly struggling. And I know that there are, are a lot of ladies who right now would, would do anything to have a child of their own. And whether the, the doctor has already said that this may, may not be possible, I want you to know just, just as we've already looked at, at Scripture this morning, right? That, that God is, is, is doing a work in so many lives, right? And I, I, I don't want to name and claim things. I don't, I don't want to speak things outside of God's will. But what I do know is, is that, that, that a desire for, for ladies is for them to have a child of their own. And whether that, that comes true or not, it's not up to me. It's truly up to God. But I, I don't believe that there's anything that's, that's too big that we shouldn't ask of God. And I believe that there, there, there are ladies in our own midst that, that long to have that very process and right. And we, we want to speak that very thing, right? We, we do want to speak that they, that, that, that they can be fruitful. And just as, as, as Kimberly shared those words, that that may be in a way that, that maybe we don't, uh, we don't realize whether that be through adoption, whether that be through uh, uh, being an aunt, whether that be through just uh, taking these children that the Lord has blessed us with inside of this church and becoming just mother figures to them. Only God knows those things. And only God can be the one that, that, that heals that, that, that hurt from not having that child. And I know that there are countless mothers who right now are, are not able to hold their children that, that have been taken far too soon from them. And I know today is a reminder of that, that pain and that, that sorrow. And I know that God is, is wanting to heal that hurt today. I know that God is wanting to do a, a great and mighty thing through, through this very act. I know that there are mothers right now that, that would do anything for their children who they prayed for for years and months and weeks and days that they would love to see them come back to a right standing with God. Today can be that day. And I know that there, 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 are, there are parents that, 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 are, that are separated from their children over something so foolish that they once uh, knew what it was, but now they have no clue. And I know that he's wanting to, to restore that very relationship today. 
But but more than that, right? I know that God is wanting to restore the greatest relationship, and that's a relationship between you and Him today. And that, and that's not just for moms. That's not just for ladies. That's for each and every one of us. Whether you're gathered here today, or whether you're watching online, or you're going to be watching later on, it's a call for all of mankind, boys, girls, men, and women. And today he's calling us to a, to a moment, right? What, what could be greater said of, of May 10th, 2020 that we make a stand, that we say that today we're going we're gonna to surrender our lives to him? What, what if today if we take uh, just those that are gathered and you at your home, if we, if we would make a public decree right now that we're taking a stand that, that not only we want to do what God's calling us to do, right? That not only we want to be the mothers, right? That we want to be the fathers and the, the sons and the daughters, but we want to make the gospel the top priority in our life. Just wouldn't it be awesome from this from this moment as we're letting this sound just ring out across all of Washington County, right, that we would make the decree right now that we're going to serve Christ above all else. Wouldn't it be something from this moment that we can look back and we can say that it's been the turning point in all of our lives? That we're going to be better mothers and we're going to be better fathers and we're going to be better children. We're going to be better servants of Christ. Not so that we can be better for ourselves, but we can be better for the kingdom of God. I don't know about you, right? But that makes me just want to run right off of these steps. That, that, I, that I have an opportunity to make everything different from this point. I can't go back to the, to the mistakes that I've made. I can't, I, can't, I can't change what's happened then, but I can make it right from this moment, church. And you have that same opportunity. So I just want to, I just want to pray. I just want to pray right now, Lord, you, you know exactly of each and every one of our hearts. You know our needs. You you know our desires. You you know exactly of what our heart is longing for in this moment. And you know of the times that, just like Amanda spoke about, and how that we we think that we know what's best for our lives. We think that that we know the plan that we can have the three kids and the and the two dogs and the and the two cars and the nice home. And how that we've got everything figured out. But yet you you orchestrate something so much different. And how that you could you could you could put someone six thousand miles across the globe that could touch our hearts in ways that, that we could never fathom. That we could never be the same. And how you could you could just be just like Kimberly said that how that we can look back over our lives and how that we can see so many people that have planted wonderful seeds and how others have come right alongside and they've watered and they've pulled weeds and they've tilled the ground and they've done so many wonderful things, but Lord, you've brought the increase. It's just right now in this moment, Lord, you're, you're wanting to do a great and mighty deed here, right here on this Mother's Day. You're wanting to make the, the gospel known not only across the globe, but you're wanting to make it known in our homes. You're, you're wanting to make it known right here in Washington County. So I just pray. I just pray for all of those that are at home and, and the decisions that they need to make for, for, for whatever is going on. Lord, I believe today is that day. I believe today that you're, you're healing ladies' wombs. I believe today is that you're, you're mending relationships, that you're bringing sons and daughters home. I believe today is a day that we're going to see people come to know you as Lord and Savior. And I just pray this very thing. I pray for that to happen, not not for anything of us, but for all of you. And I pray that we don't take our mothers for granted. I pray that we, we take time out today to celebrate the gifts that God has given us. And I pray for those who have lost their mothers and have gone on. I pray that you you will wrap your loving arms around them. But I pray... I pray for those that need to know you this morning, whatever way, whether it's just restoring and, and reclaiming a relationship with you that's broken or lost, or for those that have never trusted in you for the first time ever, Lord, I pray today is that day. 
months, Lord, I just I just thank you. And I just I just pray for all those decisions that that each and every one of them that we wouldn't hide those decisions, Lord, that we would share them and whether we share them on the on the way out or if we need to pull over into the other parking lot or if we need to call or text or message or whatever that we need to do, we need to share of the work that you're doing in our lives. So I just pray, I pray for a blessed rest of our day, safe travels as we leave out of this place. And Lord, I just pray for the work that you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, I, I thank you for coming out today. I thank you for being a part of our service. I, I know that uh, somebody will be pointing you in the right direction, the way that you want to go. Make sure that you stop by, whether you're going out through the cemetery or you go out back the way you came in. Pick out a flyer. Ladies that are at home, if you want one, we're going to be around here right to 1 o'clock like we normally are. I'll be back tonight. But if you need one brought to you, we'd love to do so. Make sure that you share with us. Uh, we'll be glad to do that uh, in, in, in any way that we possibly can. Uh, and then just stay tuned, right, for more details as we continue to, to get ready and get prepared for coming back together here. So I, I, I hopefully, hopefully, right, uh, that's going to be very, very soon. So praying for a blessed day. God bless all of uh, you ladies, mothers, right? And, uh, and may you just have a truly great day. Thanks.